like you this morning. Oh, yes. Father, we allow you to take over and reign in a very mighty way this morning. Yes. We are under the subject of the Holy Ghost and we ask you, Father, to move in a very powerful way this morning and touch our lives in a very remarkable way this morning. And we declare that you are highly lifted up. You are lifted up this morning. You are lifted up, Jesus. You are lifted up this morning. We declare you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords this morning. Makata ya raba raba, reproko zekete, mama ma shekete re re reba. You are lifted up, Jesus. Have your way, have your way this morning. Rain, rain in a very powerful way this morning. In our midst, we need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Holy Ghost. We need you, Lord. Have your way this morning. Feel this praise with your presence. Feel this praise with your presence. Feel this praise with your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Kuheshimiwa ni wewe Mungu Wakupewa sifa na utukufu ni wewe Mungu Oh wakuabudiwa wakuabudiwa Wakuheshimiwa ni wewe Mungu Mungu mwenye nguvu Mungu mwenye nguvu Wewe wastahili heshima Sote wakuabudiwa wakuabudiwa Wakuheshimiwa ni wewe Mungu unafanya mambo unafanya mambo na hiyo juu ya fahamu zetu 
aku pewasifa aku pewasifa nauju up this morning. Mm. All the glory and all the honor belong to you, Jesus. Oh, yes. All the adoration belongs to you this morning. Oh, yes. We declare there is no other God like you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. you are the kings of kings and the Lord of lords. Oh, Lord. You are the almighty God. Yes. You are the healer. Yes. You are the great God. Yes. You are I am who I am. Yes. You are the Alpha and Omega. Yes. You are the beginning and the end. Oh, yes. And we declare this morning yes. that Jesus, you are the king. You are the king. You are awesome God. You are awesome God. You are awesome God. Are awesome God. Oh, yes. In this praise we declare. Yes. yes. Have your way this morning. Have your way, Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way this morning. Makatayana ba. Reproko zekete. In the mighty name of Jesus, we secure your presence in this place. We secure your presence in this place. Jaza maisha yetu na wepo wako. Jaza mio yetu na wepo wako. To jaza asubu yalo. With your presence, oh God. Holy Spirit Come on lady Holy Spirit Come on lady this morning Holy Spirit Come on lady this morning Holy Ghost Yes I don't know whether you can feel the presence of God in the house this morning Yes He's here now Come on lady Oh Jesus Come on lady we are Lord Let about you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It is all about you, Lord. Jesus, it's all about you. It is 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 all about you. All the glory, all the adoration, all the power, all the power, all the power belong to you, Jesus. Help us, Lord. Father, this morning we roll down our own understanding and pride that you may reign. 
Tufinyange Mungu tuguze na uwepo wako usitupite. Usitupite asubuhi ya leo. Usitupite Yesu. Oh. so much. God bless you. It is good to be in the presence of God. It is good to feel Him. Hallelujah. Just want you to welcome somebody in the house. Don't, don't shake the hand, but wave him. Welcome in our service this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, praise and worship. That was awesome. May the Lord God bless you. Amen. Just want to welcome you once again, those who are watching us online, on our Facebook, and also in our YouTube channel. Welcome to Sozo Ministry Services today. And uh, kindly share the video. Welcome somebody and uh, uh, you will be a blessing to that other person that may need to hear this sermon this morning. You can also go to our YouTube channel and subscribe to Sozo Ministries Juja and subscribe. Make sure you, are, you have subscribed to that channel so that you can be able to see all the teachings that we uh, upload in that channel. Hallelujah. Uh, I am blessed so much this morning to have another privileged to bring the word of God to you. And I know that there is something great that God has set for each and every one of us, this, of us this morning. I want to talk about dealing with the four horns. And I want to answer so many questions. Yesterday I received more than 50 or 60 messages trying to ask what, what, do, you, what do you mean with the horns? It's in the Bible that we lead every morning, and I know that we're going to understand so well, and God is going to bless us and minister to us in a very, very, very special way. You can do me a favor by reducing base kidogo so that I can uh, I will stop, stop straining with my voice. Amen. That, that's good. That's better. Hallelujah. And uh, when I was asking God, or when I was praying for this sermon yesterday morning, uh, the Lord, I, I heard the voice of God speaking to me so clearly, because I know when God speaks. And I've been telling you it is good to learn and understand when God speaks, because you, you will hear God, and you will understand God if you know how God speaks. And uh, there are five senses that God uses to speak to us. He uses our mind, He uses our heart, that is the conscious, he uses our eyes, he uses our ears, and he uses even our sensing uh, uh, organs, and we can understand when God is speaking to us. And God was telling me so clearly that we are in the season of, of uplifting. Hallelujah. Tuko katika msimu wa And uh, I was asking God exactly, you are telling me about the season of uplifting, and, and people are are suffering. Uh, the world is in the in the in in agony. The world is in pain. The ha the world is in the uh, uh, so, uh, process of giving up. But the Lord was telling me that in the midst of calamity, I blessed and lifted my people. And that is when God gave me the message of dealing with the horns. And I believe this morning we're gonna get it so clear. And I want us to have a, a foundation verse that we're gonna read in the book of Psalms. That to, uh, Psalms three. Psalms chapter 3, I'm reading verses 1 uh, through 3. Uh, this is the foundation verse, and then uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to read 
uh, the other verse as we continue in Jesus' precious, mighty, mighty name. Psalms chapter 3. If you're there, I believe those who are watching us on the media, the live stream, already they have the verse on the screen. Uh, but I'm going to read so that we can hear what the Word of God is saying. Psalms chapter 3, verses 1 and 3. And this is the reading of the Word of God. I'm reading in the New King James Version. Uh, it begins by saying, Lord, how they have increased who troubled me. Remember, before I read that verse, let me give you the, the foundation or the background of the verse. This is when Paul, I mean, David was lessering with his son Absalom. You know Absalom? Simnajua, the son, Absalom. The guy who went to, but on the way, akakufa. When he, alipata miti, alipata miti mbili zimekaibi, and then akahangiwa kwa shingwa and he died. This is before that time, when Paul is struggling with his son Absalom, and this is a prayer he's making to the Lord in verses 1 through 3. And he's saying, Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. May all the may, many are they who raise up against me. Verses 2. Many are those who say of me, there is no help for him in God. Verses 3. But you, O Lord, and the shield for me, my glory, and the one who rips up my head. If you're using your Bible, you can underline the word head. Because I will explain a little bit about head. And uh, I believe this is going to be nice. I'm, I'm trying to do a little bit slow down this morning because I want to teach. And uh, I feel the grace is, I'm struggling with the grace that is trying to push me to go faster, but I want to somehow go slowly so that I can put something in you. And uh, the word head, according to the Bible, it symbolizes four things. One, it symbolizes authority, mamlaka. And the second thing, the word head symbolizes dignity, heshima. And that thing, it symbolizes Interact, in, 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 interact, and fourthly, it symbolizes origin. When you see the word head is mentioned in the Bible, it is speaking about the four things, speaking about the authority. Because when 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 God is, you know, when Paul is speaking to the church of Ephesians in Ephesians chapter five verses twenty two, and he's saying that um, su uh, women submit to your own husband as Christ submit uh, as uh, as as church or Christ submit to the church because the man is the head. He's talking about the authority. He's talking about the power. He's talking about the dignity, the intellect, and he's talking about the origin because the, the head carries the, 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 the head. It is the, it is the source or it is the nichombo ambacho kinatawara the entire part of the body. And that's why you hear or you see in when you get injured, kiumia mugu ama kidore, I don't know whether umai 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 umia mahali alafu nasikia ukiumwa na kichwa. Sio kichwa kimeumia lakini uchungu uko mahali pengine but the head is giving the signal because the head it is the origin of everything. Hallelujah. And now Paul I mean David is speaking and saying I cry to the Lord with my voice and he heard from me. Okay, I'm reading verses 3. Let me go back there. But you, O Lord, you are my shield for me, my glory, and the one who ripped my head. The one who ripped my head. In other words, even if Absalom, even if Saul and the, 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 the army of Syria and the army of Palestine, they are trying to bring down my kingship, but O Lord, you lift my authority. O Lord, you lift my dignity. O Lord, you lift my Interact. Oh Lord, you lift my origin and I will not be able to get messed up by the enemy. Let's go to Zechariah. Zechariah is the last verse, uh, I mean the last book of the Old Testament. You can go to Marakai, then go to Numa Kidogo, or go to Matthew and back two books. You get 
Zachariah there. Zachariah chapter 1, I'm reading verses 18 through 21. Are you there? Verses 18 to 21. I'm still reading in the New King James Version. This is my preferred verse this morning. This, this is the reading of the word of God. Then I raised my eyes and looked, and there were four horns. This is where the title of my sermon is coming from. And he said to the angels who, take, who talked with me, what are these? The same question you asked me. Hallelujah. So I believe even those days, Zachariah, when the Lord showed him a vision, he asked God the same question. And uh, I believe we're going to answer all those questions today. So he said to me, These are the horns that scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Then the Lord showed me four craftsmen and said, What are these coming to do? So he said, These are the horns that scattered Judah so that no one could lift up his head. I want you to connect back to the verse that uh, uh, David is speaking in Psalms, chapter 3, verses 1 and 3. And he's talking about God and saying, Though my enemy have pushed me to a point of killing me and destroying me, but, O oh Lord, you secured me and you have lifted up my head. Are you getting something? Aha. Uh -huh. But the craft, um, okay. So that no one could lift up his head, but the craftsmen are coming to terrify them to cast out the horns of nations that lift up their horns against the land of Judah and to scatter it. I want to define horn according to the word of God. It represents four things. One, it represents power. Because if you read to the uh, to the verse that we've just read, you, you see that uh, 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 Zechariah is seeing a vision for Israel, but there is something that God is showing to him. He's telling him that there are horns that have been raised for one purpose, to scatter Judah, to scatter Israel, and to scatter Jerusalem. So the work of the horn, it is to scatter, to destroy, and to hinder, and to stop the mission of God to be fulfilled. And the second thing uh, uh, that symbolizes horn in the in the verse that you just read, it it, it symbolizes force, the power, the force. Ile uzito wanguvu na mamlaka. That it symbolizes authority, and also it symbolizes influence. It symbolizes power, force, authority, and influence. And the, and the horn has been assigned to scatter the people of Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. And the word scatter means to disconnect. Nile hali ya kukatanisho ama kondolewa, to be disconnected, to be separated, to, to be wasted, to lose, or even to vanish. Because Zachariah is saying in verses 20 and 21, no, verse 20 says, the Lord showed me the four craftsmen, the craftsmen, and he said, what are these coming to do? So he said, these are the horns that are scattered Judah. These are the horns that has been assigned so that they may scatter Judah so that no one of them could lift up his head. And I've come to tell you this morning, they are, they are horns, and I'm, I'm going to speak to them this morning, we are going to deal with them according to the word of God, that has been assigned in our life, that has been assigned to you, that has been assigned to your business, that has been assigned to career, to scatter you, because the, 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 the horns are the power, are the forces. Remember, Paul is saying in, his, in Ephesians chapter 6, verses number 13, that we don't wrestle with the flesh and the blood, but the powers, the authority, the cosmics, the, the, the principalities, 
Because he was talking about the horns that stands against the will of God and forces us outside the will of God. That influence us to walk outside the mind of God. And I'm I, I going to talk about the four horns that we need to deal with them. And I'm going to call it a day for today. Four horns that we need to deal with them in our life. We see in Israel, there were four horns that were problem. Ambazo zirikuwa shida katika utendakazi wao. Ambazo zirikuwa shida katika kuendelea kwao. Ambazo zirikuwa shida ata katika maisha yao. Na unaona ata mtu wanaitua Daudi ambaye likuwa ni, mtu, ni hodari katika vita. Maniku nasema, akamambia mungu mahadui zangu wame nisungukia. Mahadui zangu wame nisukuma. Lakini jambo ni naromba katika moyo wangu. Kanisaidia ni kabeza kuinua kichwa changu. Because the horns, the work of the horn, it is to subdue. It is to diminish. It is to vanish. It is to disconnect us from standing and, and flourishing to a place where God has called us to do. In your financial life, there is a horn that is dealing with your finances. In your career, in your family, in your marriage, in, in, your, in, your, in your plans and, and the vision that you have for your future, there are horns that have been assigned to make sure they stopped you, to make sure they put a wall. And I told you the other day that the devil has no power. Whatever the devil uses, he uses something we call the strategy and he uses deception. Kwa sababu wanajua, if I send, if, ni, ni, mimi, yeye hayu, hana mamlaka maana alifungwa. Yesu wakasema, ni mechukua mamlaka yote binguni na duniani. Na ni mechukua ufunguo. Ufunguo likuwa ni wakufunga shetani. Na kasema, kupitia huu ufunguo mba uliye chukuliwa kwenu, I give it back to you. So that you may open the doors of heaven. So the devil has no power. So he uses the horns. The horns are those, the strategy to make sure that he deals with our life. And I want to talk about four because I cannot be able to talk all of them. But today I just want to mention four. And I believe they are going to help us. And the first horn, it is the spirit of devaluation. The spirit of devaluation. Roho ya kushisho hadi. I don't know whether I'm, I'm saying it in the right way. Ya kushisho hadi. This is a spirit that diminishes you and the value of human, it diminishes the value of human life. The value. Hapa nipo shetani anaza kukubiria and you begin to feel that you are unworthy. You begin to feel that there is nothing good can come out of you. And I want to come, I have come to tell you this morning. Before other people to telling you you are useless, you are supposed to understand by yourself that you are not useless. Because the very day you announce to yourself that you are useless, then you announce to the whole world that you will never make it because wewe mwenyewe usha kubari. Let me tell you one thing. The first key for your prosperity, it is not in the hands of God. I will say it again. The key for your prosperity, it is not in the hands of God. It is in your hands. And I can prove to you by the word of God. Can somebody open for me in the book of Matthew chapter 16? Matthew chapter 16. Are you there? I'm reading verses. Verses. Um, hmm, verses 18. No, verses 19. Matthew 16, 19. This is what the Lord said to Peter. And he said, And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of God, of heaven. And whatever you shall bind on earth, it shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you shall rule on earth, it shall rule in heaven. In other words, Jesus surrendered the authority in the hands of man. And I've come to tell you this morning, there, is, there are some things that God cannot do in your life until you allow him to access your life. Kuna milango mingine mungu hawe zingia katika maisha yako. Mana Yesu alipo maliza kazi yake. Mandiko nasema, he handed over the authority to the man. And he said, I give you the authority. And I've come to tell you this morning, you carry the authority. Wewe umebeba mamlaka ya mungu, umebeba wezo, umebeba funguo za baraka. The blessings are no longer in the hands of God. Your future, your destiny, your you you flourish, your you you 
your blessings are no longer in the hands of God. Jesus gave them to you. And it is up to you to begin to know that you are variable. You are royal priesthood. You are important in the hands of God. You begin to fight and destroy this enemy, the spirit of uh, devaluation, and begin to declare to yourself that I am variable. I'm going to make it in life because I was bought by the blood of Jesus. I am, I am important. And Jesus said that whoever that lives in you is greater than the one that lives in the world. And I've come to tell you this morning, this is the first horn that messes up the life of human. When you don't make it in your life in, in one way or the other, you begin to feel, I am finished. You begin to devalue yourself. You begin to say, I cannot speak before people. I want you to look at the story of, of, of Moses. Remember in Genesis, uh, in, in Exodus, when Moses was born in the in, was born Nakukaba Vijana was well first born. He was taken into the hands of Pharaohs, and the and the daughter of Pharaoh took care of her. Now Maniko Nasema he grew with wisdom and with utterance. He grew with wisdom and in utterance. That is what the word of God said. Alikuwa amebarikuwa kwa hekima na kwa kuongea kwa maneno akinyochake. Look at Moses after 40 years. Wakiwa jangwani wakati Yesu alimpata pale akamtuma ende akatoa wana wa Israeli anambia Mungu aje He said to God what I cannot be able to talk because I am I am a stammerer but the same same bible is saying 40 years back he could be able to speak so well why because now David I mean some some, some uh, Moses because of the environment aliweza kujishusha hadi he devalued himself and the very day he devalued himself, that came over his life. And that's why the Bible says that the power of life and death, it is in the tongue. And I've come to tell you this morning, you be, you're going to begin to declare to your life. You're going to begin to decree to your life. You're going to begin to prophesy to your own self. You're going to begin to speak good things upon your life. Because God has given you the tongue. You know, you are small gods in this earth. Sisi ni tumiungu tudogo. We are small God. And we can, God has given us the authority over the atmosphere, over the environment to declare things. And that's why you see God when he created man. The Bible says, when he created man, he gave him power and authority. In Genesis chapter 128, he said, uh, uh, take dominion, subdue, and and uh, and, and, and uh, take and um, and and take over. Na mandiko nasema, when he created the animal, God himself sat somewhere and he told Abraham, name them. Because God was trying to show the man, the authority is not in me, but it is in you. And I've come to tell you this morning, that we need to fight this horn that devaluates our life. We begin to understand that we are variable. We cannot be diminished. We cannot be destroyed. We cannot, be, we cannot hear what the world is speaking to our life. Hallelujah. And anytime you devaluate yourself, you lose authority on your head. Because your head represents the authority. When I talk about the head, I don't talk about this head. I talk about the authority that is in you. It diminishes you. It stops you from moving where God wants you to be. I want you to look at the some few years when, when, the, when, when, when Kenya was being colonized. When you look about the life of the people in the coastal region, you know, when you look at the Bible, it means where they are in Onyeshaga Mahali, Kuliko na Maji, ni Utajiri. Unakumuka at the road when they were sharing with his brother Abraham. Maniko nasema road alichagua kwenda kule chini mahali kulika kuna maji. But road, I mean, Ibrahim wakaenda mirima, road akaenda kule chini. Because mahali kuna chemichemi ya maji, dicho kuna beba Utajiri. But in, in us, miaka kadha ilio pita, Mahali ambapo Mungu alikuwa ametufungulia baraka zetu tulipatumia kufanya the trade ya kuuza binadamu. Huh? The slavery was done in the coastal region. Why? Because the, the Kenyans and the people that were, were on those days they carried that praise or they carried themselves out they diminished themselves. Kwa maana waliona kana they are not variable. They could sell their brothers because of the gun. They could sell their brothers because of the Bible. They could sell their brother because of their the education, they could sell their brother because of the small things, because they diminish themselves. Hawa could welewa maana ama importance amba ilio kuandani yao. But I've come to tell you this morning, we're gonna deal with this spirit of devaluation. 
And this spirit is not going to be dealt by the pastor. It is going to be dealt by you. Because it is you that carries the key for your future. It is you that carries the key for your destiny. It is you that carries the key of your tomorrow. It is you that carries the key for your blessings. You know, I remember somebody told me a story that when he was back in the village, when he was a young boy, Alikua, he grew up knowing that chicken in a hotel was very expensive. Very expensive. And that was his whole life. Ata wakati alisoma, kamaliza high school, akenda university, akamaliza akadiri wakazi. He could not eat a chicken on a restaurant because he was told by his mother the chicken is so expensive, it's very expensive in a restaurant. And one day he went with a friend and the friend ordered the lunch and uh, he was looking uh, at, uh, at a menu kukifika mali kuna kuku hataki ku itisha kuku. But when his brother, I mean his friend alipo itisha kuku na wakakura and then when the bill came he wanted to take the bill and see how much they are paying. And when he saw how much he was paying for the chicken, because all his life, his mind was diminished. He devaluated himself by saying, ah, the chicken is very expensive. I cannot buy a chicken in a hotel. Because the blessings and the cars and the flourish and progress in our life, it is in our mind. And we're going to deal with this horn and know that we are variable. In the eyes of God. We are variable in the eyes of God. We grew up knowing that frying with a, a plane is very expensive. Actually now, nobody is going to Mombasa or going to other countries with a plane. It's even more cheaper than driving. Because in Mombasa, you're going to take less than 5,000. If you fuel your car, it's going to take you more than 10,000. But because of how we grew up, we grew knowing Na katika mwazo yetu, tukajidibaru wet. Ati hawezi ukasimama mbele za watu. Ukisikia unaitu na mtu muende uh, Grand Regency Hotel. Unaanza wasi wasi. Because you fear that tiny, very expensive. You know, it is good. You know, when you, you mingle with the people of, uh, of the higher class, of the higher caliber, they change your mind. They change the way you see things. They change the way you understand. They change the way you color yourself. And it is good one of these fine days. Spare a thousand and go to Stanley Hostel and ask the cup of tea and pay that cup of tea at 800 shillings. Go home complaining to yourself, but your mind has been taken to another level. Amen. Komana, wakati mingine, shetani anataka kutuweka, kutushukisha. No, there is something that I've told my wife for quite a long time. Me, I don't do a sabu ya chakura. I don't care how much I eat. As far as know this body, you cannot pay this body, Freddy. It is this body is so variable. You can't pay it. And sometimes we can you can buy a very expensive uh, shoe, you can buy a very expensive uh, uh, car, you can buy a very expensive uh, chair, but you eat very poor food. Let me use that broken English. Very poor food. Huh? Why? Because you are devaluating yourself. And I've come to tell you this morning, the way you, be, you begin to live today like a millionaire, you begin to live today like a rich man, you begin to change your lifestyle. The, the lifestyle does not begin with bringing up stuffs in the house, but it begins with your mind. When you begin to change yourself and say that I'm not poor, I am blessed, I am I'm not going to suffer, I am not going to, I'm not sick, I'm going to make it in life. When you begin to change those things in your mind, I've come to tell you these things, you're going to lose in the spirit of devaluation. Because this is the horn that the enemy uses in our life. To make sure that we're going to make the... You know the devil cannot take your blessing. Like in the kitu to me and the deception. He uses the lie. I can be a, cannot buy a car when you're living in somebody else's house. Nunua, paki kwa wenyewe. Uki paki kwa wenyewe, mungu atona, there is a need for you to get a place that you can park your car and God is going to provide for you to a place that belong to you. But you cannot just live there. You will die saying nikinunua kwangu ni ondanunua gari. Buy that car. Nikinunua kwangu nikinua nyumba angu ni ondanunua fridge. Ukua chakura zero unapikanga ni chakura kidoho. Kwa sababu hauna mahali pakuziwekeza. Nunua! 
Hallelujah. We have to change the way we see things. Eh? The second spirit that we're going to deal with, the second horn, it is called the spirit of greed. The word means, it is, greed means grabbing everything that is available, not without planning for tomorrow. Tukua chochote ambacho kiko available, bila kupanga mipango ya kesho. I want you to look at the life of Esau and Jacob. Maandiko nasema, when Esau came back from hunting, alikuwa na njaa, alikuwa hana chakura. Lakini maandiko nasema, he looked at the, at, the, at, the, at the present need and he said to my, his brother Jacob, that the birthright has no value to me. Because even if I don't give out this birthright, I am going to die. And his brother noticed that this guy was desperate. Na maandiko nasema, when his brother focuses on his mind, he uses the intelligent. Akumambia, now for me to give you food, then you need to do something for me. We need to have a deal. Na maandiko nasema, Esau said, no problem, because even if I die, I don't have a life to live. And he told him, give me, give me your birthright. You know, sometimes the devil has, has used the spirit of greed to make us miss the, the important and the valuable things that we have in life. There are some things that God has given you. He has given you the mind. He has given you the job. He has given you the ability to do something somebody else cannot do. Sunday ni niwambia, kuna jambu ambaro unaweza ukafanya, mwingine hawezi. There is something, my wife, though we are one, there is something she can do, I cannot do. When I get to that line, I have to, uh, I have to request her to do it for me because she can do it, I can't do it. And there are things I can do it, she cannot be able to do it. And we are created in that way. And sometimes the devil wants to use this, the, the, the horn of greed to make, us, to make sure that we take away what belongs to God. Because greed means it is grabbing everything that is available. Kuna watu walipoteza usianoho na mungu. Kuna watu walipoteza future yao. Kuna watu walipoteza vipawa. Mungu walikuwa meachiria katika maisha yao. It is because of the instant, the passing pressure. Remember, Moses is saying in Hebrew chapter 11, I think 25, 11, 25, he's saying that I cannot continue enjoying the fretting, the passing pressure with the people of Israel. It is rather I suffer with my people than to enjoy the passing pressure of sin. That was a very powerful statement that was made by somebody, somebody who was determined to move forward and to do what God wants him to do. Because the enemy uses the spirit of greed and making sure that he takes us because the devil makes sure if Shetani hangaliagi leo, he looks at your tomorrow. And you know that greed means it is taking whatever is available without planning for tomorrow. And he makes sure kesho mungu ameapa kukutumia. Kesho mungu ataka kukutembea na wewe. Kesho mungu ataka kukunenea. Kesho mungu ataka kukuinua. And akikisha katikati ya leo na kesho there is, there is that element of greed. And he takes you away the mind of God. And mekua ni kiwambia. Anytime God takes you to a point number seven and you fall kurudi tena seven Haikuangi raisi. Because God does not maintain you to where you are. He has to take you back and begin again. Mutianu wa mungu wa unanga kusukumwa. I remember when I was in school, kuna wale watu walikuwa miaka yote ya nakujaga namba moja kutoka nyuma. Kira wakati, namba moja kutoka nyuma. Na sasa anonekana mezeeka. I remember there was a girl, tukua tosoma na ee, at class 3, alikuwa na 15 years. Kwa mzee, na ni mwiri kubwa. Sasa ilikuwa inabidi kila mwaka anasukumwa. Kila mwaka anasukumwa. Now by the way, I, I want to tell you this. Alimaliza vizuri. Right now she is an inspector of police. Alimaliza vizuri. Kwa sababu ye yeah, alijua katika mawazo yake kushindwa kwangu. It is not my future. I have come to tell you this morning. There are people here ambao pengine kwa masomo yenu wa muku pita. Lakini kuna kitu kingine kikondani yako ambacho ni chadamana kuliko masomo ya shule. Because there is something that God has put in you. There is an element in you that connects you to your destiny. I've seen people that have gone to school. They are, they, they, they are doctorate. They, 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 are, they, are, they, have, they have they are professors. And when you look at their life, they are miserable. Because their future is not connected with their, their education. They have something else inside them that is more variable even than education. It is good to begin to know. It is good to begin to take away the greed because the greed in doing to the theater confusion and we fail to understand what God has put in our life. And this is the horn the enemy is using in our life. 
Unaona Israel maniko nasema they scattered them they scattered Judah Israel and Jerusalem because it was a stronghold that was hindering them stopping them and standing on their way na walikosa kufika mahali Mungu aliwafanya wafike kwa maana those horns were so strong over their life and even the life that we live i was asking god which are the horns and god was giving me several a uh, different kind of horns that deals with our life every day and when i looked at them when i was praying for them i could feel them i could feel struggling with such kind of things in life because they are there and i know they are suffering because devaluation is something that speaks to you every day ukiitwa mahali jambo la kwanza unajiangalianga unajisikiza unajiona vile wewe uko leo hii ukiambua unaitwa na uhuru hauwezi ukaamka uende ukamuona utajisumbua kwanza because you already devaluate yourself mimi nikiitwa naamka naenda because i'm the son of the king mimi ni mtoto wa mfalme i i am i am i am the prince in the kingdom of god Hallelujah. You need to begin to change from here. And the third horn it is the spirit of defeat. Defeat means using the kind of shortcut to win. I don't know whether where you are today you followed the light channel to be where you are. I don't know whether you have ever declared to yourself that I will not make it i don't know whether you have ever declared to yourself mimi nime mimi sasa nime give up mimi hii ndoa nawachana nayo mimi hii kazi nawachana nayo mimi hii familia ninatoka huku wamenionea sana mimi hii maneno walisema ndani kweli let me tell you one thing you know i was doing a survey and and study about the curse because it's a topic that i've been teaching and i'm going to teach it and i came to realize that 80% regardless of 20% 80% of the curse that touches our life inakuwa so effective because we believe that we are cursed na tukaamini tumeraniwa na ukianza kuona vile mambo inatendeka unakumbuka ni ile curse ni yeyo ni hiyo ndio inafanya leo mambo ikuwe magumu hivyo and any time you give the door to an enemy an open door shetani He is one of the people that they don't joke around with the opportunity. He is an opportunist. Shetani tumpeka mrako kidogo. 0.0001%. Kadogo tu. Anajua kuitumia vizuri. Na by the way, kama tungekuwa na zeal kama ya shetani, ile yako nayo, haki Mungu tungemfanyia mambo mengine dunia hii baka shangae. Because the devil knows how to use the opportunity. Any time you tell your mind, na by the way, vile nimeona leo ni kama venye shoshu alisema venye kukaa alisema vile an, wakati ni tulikosana na anti kuna maneno alisema na ndio hii ndio hii you've confirmed to the devil now the devil will use it because you in your mind you've given him an a doorway to mess up your life and this spirit of defeat it is working so strong in your life you begin to speak to yourself you begin to uh, self curse yourself and say i will, I will not make it in this marriage I will not make it in this family. I will not do jasita barikiwa. Kenya tarot is that you for the around the atmosphere of this place to defeat you. And any time you allow the devil to defeat you, oh my friend, you're going to mess. Listen to the statement of David. David anasema, even though my enemies women inukia, even though women ipotelea, lakini Mungu ninakuomba ukainue kichwa changu. But there is no place ambapo David ari confess na akasema nimekubali nimeshindwa I don't know how many of you you have confessed ukasema nimeshindwa and that thing you know Jesus was in the point of almost giving up but there is a statement that Moses would fanya in the garden of Gethsemane because Yesu alikuja katika umbo wa binadamu because he wanted you to have no excuse he wanted you to have no excuse ya kusema hii ilinishika you know I have ever talked to girls And young men ambao wame fall in sin and they are they are coming to me and I'm, I'm I'm helping them back to Christ and they are telling me you know me pastor hiyo kitu nilipata off guard singeweza singeweza kujitoa and I've come to tell you this morning the bible says that there is no temptation that is beyond your ability hakuna hakuna dhambi ambayo ulifanya dunia hii ambayo utapea Mungu excuse ati Mungu sikuweza hakuna hakuna hata moja kwa maana temptation ambazo zinakujanga kwetu Mungu kuwa anazipima kwanza. 
at the passes let me tell you one thing hiyo temptation unaona ni shetani sio shetani inakuwa imepitia katika mikono ya Mungu ameivaruate akaona this one ataweza wewe ukashindwa ukakuwa uka accept defeat na when you accept defeat hakutakuwa na jiaro mwingine mbele za Mungu atakuwa amekwambia i knew this one you you make it because many are the time that we are out defeat every morning we are out defeat in our business biashara ikianguka mwezi moja unasema hii biashara imekataa na funga na pengine Mungu alikuwa anataka kukujaribu ndio wakati atakubariki utaweza kuwa na na, 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 na usubira utaweza kuvumilia utaweza kusaidia wengine wanaopitia katika hali ngumu kuna watu katika ndoa zao zimekuwa panda shuka Mungu anaruhusu iko hivyo ndio mtu mwingine akawahi pitia katika ile hali utamsaidia wengine wanakuwa na mahusiano iliyo mazito God is taking you through that channel so that you may help somebody else in the future that is going through such a situation but we give up so easily we say no we can't make it jesus was in the point of giving up he said father if it is my will take this cup away from me but let your will be done and aliposema let your will be done it was a statement of no not accepting defeat and he conquered the death he conquered the 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 the, the devil he conquered the sin and all everything around us So who are we? We are the children of God. Na ile mamlaka yote Yesu alitumia, tumesoma tukasema alitupatia. That means you don't operate with lesser authority that Jesus was operating with it here on earth. Actually you operate with higher authority because he said the latter church will be more glorious than the present church. That means you operate with a higher grace, with a higher anointing, with a higher power than the one that Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane because he gave you the key He gave you everything. He poured himself and he said I'm not going to leave you as an orphan, but I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit who is going to give you power and authority. The Holy Spirit was Jesus coming back to you in terms of the spirit. You are not alone. You have Jesus in you, you have you, you have the Father and you have the Holy Spirit. So you are four in one. Jesus was only Jesus, Father and the Son, they were Trinity, but you have a combination of you. So you cannot be defeated. You cannot just, just lift up your hands and say nimeshindwa. Because we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. And we cannot allow the spirit of deception. We cannot allow the lie of the enemy. We cannot allow the spirit that takes trust in our life. I've come to tell you this morning. I've, I've experienced God in my life. And I've been telling you I worked in a place whereby I was senior to people that were not qualified. Uh, I mean that were work more qualified than I am. But because I believed in God and I trust myself that anywhere I go I must make change. Sijui kama unakaa kama mimi. Mimi nikiingia mahali na hakikishaka ninaleta ukubadilika. Ninaleta I have to bring change because I know I am the son of the kingdom of God. And when you begin to have confidence when you begin to believe in God when you begin to kata defeat because the defeat is a weapon from the devil because the bible says that we should not fear you know God rebuked Joshua in Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 and he told uh, 7 to 9 he told him that you should not fear don't fear God was trying to tell Joshua that you carry the spirit of God unabeba mamlaka ya Mungu na usikubali kudanganywa by the spirit of deception because if the devil takes fear out of you you will not conquer the city you will not fulfill the word of god you will not fulfill the mission you will not fulfill the plan you will not fulfill the mandate ambaye mungu amenena katika maisha yetu and i've come to tell you this morning we gonna conquer this horn of fear in your career mahali unapofanya kazi begin to feel like you are not nobody else is with you begin to feel like you have been entrusted in that place begin to take that place like your own in your family in your business in 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 the calling that God has put in your life begin to take dominionship because dominionship takes means that you take the highest authority but fear it means you take the spirit of diminish and the fourth horn it is called the spirit of jealousy this is hitting so much the church the nation the people the country the families the brothers and sisters and it is one of the horns that the devil is using roho ya wivu sio ndio hiyo kwa Kiswahili inazuilia mungu akaweza kutenda kazi katika maisha yetu and let me tell you when you are when you when you are around the spirit of jesus to take of your life 
you are closing the door for the blessings in your life maana milango ya Mungu inafunguliwa na kupeana milango ya Mungu inafunguliwa na kukubali milango ya Mungu inafunguliwa na kuselebrate when other people are, are, are achieving in life and the word jealous uh, means to covet what other people have and determine other people's and undermining other people's effort it is to covet covet ni ile hali ya kuangalia katika jicho la kutamani lakini ni kule kusio kuna kutamani kuzuri ni kule kutamani kwa wivu you know when you see somebody driving a very good car and you like you, you love it that is not a covet that is you love that car and you're going to have a car like that one but covet it is when you begin to have an eye that is full of jealousy and also undermining other people's effort ukiona watu wengine wanainuliwa there is a spirit that is telling you i i wish huyu mtu akufe you know somebody told me the some other time that they were praying for me to die one day niliambia nikufe mtu zeeisha bwana umekaa hii dunia na sasa tunaona ile mambo anafanya na sisi tumekuwa hapa miaka mingi sana na tufanye hivyo si mtu Mungu amchukue bwana lakini nawaambia mimi nitakaa unaona ile ndege inaitakuwa laven ile ilipelekea kana ni chakula erija nitakaa kama hiyo ndege inakaa you know we are growing younger with my wife every day we are not going old we are growing younger because i believe that god sijamalizana na Mungu hata wewe unakaa and niwaambia tukianza hii mwaka asante before the church was closed when corona was so much ilipoingia Kenya nikwambia none of you will die none of your children will die and none of you will be infected with corona hata kama itakushika itakushika na uponded how utajua because it is not part of you it is not part of this church it is not part of this family it is not part of you who are watching me because we are covered by the blood of the lamb of god we carry the healing of god we carry the authority we carry the anointing we are the representative of god here on earth if we die who will represent god god has ordained you to represent him to a place where you are where you are you are a ambassador of god god cannot take you away because he want you to preach and to say about him tomorrow and you know jira say is when you are busy destroying other people i don't know whether you have ever celebrated when god is blessing other people but you are there trying to speak ill about them trying to destroy them unakuwa tu unajua maneno ya kinywa ni makali sana kuliko mishale ambayo tunadungwa the physical arrows the words of the mouth they are so strong and uh, jira say is when you begin to destroy unakata mizizi ukiona mtu akiinuka unakata mizizi ukiona mtu akibarikiwa unakata mizizi ukiona mtu akibarikiwa you are not celebrating with him but you are messing him down this is the horn the enemy is using and hakikisha i will not destroy that person but i will use you to destroy that person na hakikisha sasa wewe na huyo amtaenda mahali remember the brothers of joseph maniko nasema when joseph told them that i have a dream And remember by that time he was just uh, he was known like a man of many colors the coat of many colors na akasema i have seen i have a dream but their brothers they they, they understood unajua kuna watu wengine they will understand your dream kap zaidi ya wewe kuna watu kiwaambia vile Mungu amenena they can interpret it so easily and accurately more than you and that, some of them they are rested in the spiritual realm because they have authority over your life some of them even they are men of god they are ordained They are hearing the voice of God but they are destiny destroyers. And it is good I have come to tell you this morning even before you mention to other people what God is doing to your life mention to God because God will never disappoint you. God will never will never mess up with your dreams. Kuna watu hapa katikati yetu mungekuwa mbali sana lakini mambo mengine yalivunjwa yalishikwa yalihalipiwa na the people that you trusted so much in life. Na ulipoambia your dream Hawa waka celebrate na kuambia oh I'm happy for you but deep side in their heart they were destroying you they were messing up you because the spirit of jealousy it is the horn that the enemy is using to mess up the church and I've come to tell you this morning if you want to go up and go higher if you want to go up strong begin to celebrate other people's achievement I told you the other day that if I see God doing something in the Marian's life I will be very happy because I know that God is in the neighborhood. He is not far away from me because if he is dealing with her and I'm here that means God is in the room and I I might be the next person to receive the visitation of God. But now when you feel jealousy on her you are chasing the presence of God out. 
And remember the, the men, the two brothers. If wangechukua ile ndoto ya Joseph na waiembrace na wambariki. Pengine hata hiyo janga na, na shida walipitia kwa hiyo miaka yote hawangepitia. Wana wa Israeli kwenda kule Misri na kuwa miteka kwa miaka 400 hawangekuwa because jira se inaleta it has its own repercussion. You may think uh, you are messing me but you are also messing yourself. You may think you are destroying that person but you are also destroying that you are destroying yourself because you may destroy me and uh, I am your tomorrow's destiny helper. And I want to tell you this morning You know success is infectious. It's something that you can infect somebody. The same case. If I am blessed and I begin by telling you go to the people that are success. Look at the people that are so blessed in their life. Angalia wale watu wamebarikiwa katika maisha yao. Waangalie wale watu they spend their day with. Hawezi pata tajiri amebarikiwa sana na anashida na maskini. Because success is infectious. And poverty is infectious. Toka kwa umaskini, shikana na wale watu walio barikiwa, waanze kukuambukiza. Kwa maana hiyo atmosphere yao mahali walipo inanena kitu tofauti na kile ulicho nacho. Yamaanisha kuwa either you submit to that authority that you are in or they swallow you or they take you out of their company. Now when other people God is blessing them, it means that God want to bless you. When you know God may not directly bless you but he may bless the person next to you so that he may become a blessing to you remember what god said to ibrahim that i'm going to bless you that you may become a blessing to other people there are people in this world ambao mungu amewainua na walizaliwa wametiwa mafuta wamepewa utajiri sio kwa sababu yao mungu amewatajirisha kwa sababu yako ndio siku moja wa kuinue wa kufikisha katika mahali pengine i saw the guy the other day that resembles Uhuru Kenyatta he was alionyeshwa kwa tv tu hiyo dakika moja there is a company inauza magari kiamburo ndeto maridadi car motors imeumpa gari the guy has a car right now the guy is signing a contract with another company to work with them simply because alifanana na Uhuru Uhuru alifanyika president ndio kuna mtu atainuliwa kwa hiyo siku kama pengine ungesikia vibaya asifanyike rais pengine huyo mtu angezuiliwa kuwa rais kuwa baraka katika wakati ule so there are people that got let me tell you there are people that have just bought the car today or they will bought the car next year kusio kwa sababu hiyo gari they are buying to drive it but they are buying that car ndio wakiendesha miezi kidogo Mungu wape msukumo wa kuletea wakilia because god uses people to bless you and it is good to begin to enjoy and celebrate other people achievement me i don't just joke around with the people that are coming in my life because i don't know why god brought them in my life i don't i, I don't i don't I, i don't blame god why he takes me to other people's life there are places that and there are people that god takes me into their life and i feel I'm, i'm uncomfortable because when i look at the social class i feel I'm, i don't belong to that class they are so low or they are so high but mungu anambia be there because there is a mission that are put in your life and any time i'm in somebody's life i know god is doing something new because jira say shetani anaitumia sio kumesi we sio kumesi huyo mtu mwingine he used that spirit to mess you because any time you have jira over somebody unafunga baraka zako unafunga baraka zako and look at those brothers walipomuonea wivu joseph maniko nasema shida zao zilianza pale wakasababisha shida kwa familia yao njaa ikawa pale na zaidi ya yote wakasababisha shida kwa kisasi kilichofuata zaidi ya miaka miaine wakuwa katika mikono ya wa, ya, 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 ya wa Misri ni kwa sababu ya tu ya neno wivu and we're gonna kick this thing out of our life because god has set a standard in our life there is something that god has put in your life There is something that is so variable in your life you cannot see it unless you begin to celebrate other people it will begin to grow You know I was rem- I was looking at the story of uh, Eriod is it Eriod Kipchoge the guy who broke the record ya kukimbia kulijulikana katika dunia mzima ya kuwa hakuna binadamu anaweza kimbia mpio uh, zaidi ya kilomita 42 kwa masaa mawili haikuwa vile na hakujakuwa tena it is he is the first person to break the record 
Na maandiko nasema alipokimbia na akamaliza kwa masaa mawili today ameweka standard. Sasa hakuna mwingine atakaye kimbia chini ya masaa matatu. Ni lazima akimbia afikishe masaa mawili ndio avunje ile record because he has set the standard. And there are people that God will uh, there are things that God has put in your life to stand a standard for other people. God will give you a, a, a voice to sing that every other musician in the world in Kenya and everywhere they will try to reach the standard ambao umeset. Kuna jambo ambalo utafanya. I saw people are doing No, it's good to watch news eh. It's not good to be overborn again. It is not good to be so religious. Huh? It is good to 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 watch the news and also to watch other how other people are doing things in the world. And you begin to realize there are people who are doing things ambazo ah uh, ziko zaidi ya watu wengine. I I told you the other day the guy from is what was it Raikipia ambaye aliunda ndege. Na ndege ikapaa katika anga lakini sasa shida ambayo alikuwa nayo kubwa ni vile hiyo ndege itashuka Iran kwa sababu sasa Iran the mechanism ya ku start off lakini mechanism ya ku land ndio ilimtisha kidogo ilianguka kama mai because he didn't land that but for the government wa msereprete wa msaidie i don't know where that guy went ukifanya ka kitu nimeona wengine siku hizi wanatengeneza vitu na and i'm telling you the generation wanabe tuko nao saa hizi ah watu wako na akili bwana Huh? Jen, these people they are very intelligent. Ati mtu anaandika nguo na simu akiwa huko nje zinaanuliwa kukianza kunyesha zinaingia 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 na mrango inafungwa. Hata ndio where are we when these people walikuwa na hii akili yote? This I I'm, I'm also wondering to the next generation itakuwa namna gani. Watakuwa wanaji watakuwa natengeneza mchana na technology. Kuna kuwa na mchana yao. Nyimbo kwa usiku wametengeneza kama mchana kao. Because these people they have a, they have wisdom and when we see them doing something like we don't feel jealousy over them we help them huh? like i saw the other day a boy in in uh, in moranga he's a very anashika nyoka na mikono uliona hiyo ni kitu kwa news the kwf was sumbwa na nyoka for 3 hours python 10 feet 10 10 10 feet long ah kuishika but the boy just came for 15 minutes na akaishika Now I was wondering if the government of Kia, uh, Muranga ni wazuri. Si uchukue utu kijana tu wampe tu knowledge kidogo tu because he knows how to handle the snake. Ila kitu anastahili kujua ni ajue sumu ambazo ziko kwa nyoka ndio ajue hii nyoka ishi kangu ina mikono inaweza kukuma na ikuwe. He just need a small training. But now nobody it's falling in the deaf ear. But when we begin to celebrate other people what other people are doing if I if I come here and sing so well the other present worshipers are not supposed to be fighting among themselves they are supposed to celebrate that person because huyo mtu akinuliwa kidogo tu hivi aanze kuito katika television atukuliwe kama saa hizi tuko kwa live media there are people who take that small clip na wanaanza kuitupa kwa social media kesho yake unaanza kuitwa na una, una maisha yako inaanza kubadilika Like I saw this young girl called Edith Wairimo. I think Edith Wairimo yeah. She was just singing in one of the PCA somewhere and uh, somebody just took a clip akaiweka kwa social media. Ikaanza ku move. Leo hii hakuna radio station ambayo hajakuwa Friday ilikuwa ni jana. Jana alikuwa Kimori FM the place I go naenda kuhubiri kila Friday. She is so famous. Na anaenda na hiyo team yake ya praise and worship because you may stop this person from helping you shine ukifikiria sasa amechukua nafasi yangu lakini sasa ujue umejifungia wewe yamaanisha utakaa katika hiyo level hautavuka but when i begin to move i'll move with you when i begin to go to another level i'll go with you when god begin to expand me he will he will expand me with you so it is good to learn to celebrate other people remember the four reapers as i finish maniko nasema the four reapers walipo walipoenda kule nje ya mji na Mungu akawabariki na chakula wakati wali the, the, the jeshi lilo walipotoka katika ile camp wakasema even if you stay in this camp we will die and even if you go back to the city they will they will chase us out because tumefutwa nje ya mji lakini wakasema kwa mioyo yao we cannot continue staying here let's go even if they will kill us let's go na maandiko nasema walipokuwa njiani wakienda Jeshi la Syria alinile jeshi la Samaria likasikia kana kwamba ni jeshi ya Syria ilikuwa inakuja kuamaliza na maandiko nasema they took they took their they took their their weapons and they free they ran away na wale watu wakaingia katika ile camp wakakula wakashiba wakachukua dhahabu na wakaenda nazo but they said to themselves 
and this is very important they say to themselves we cannot just be tatuwezi tukashipa na kubarikiwa peke yetu and our brothers in the other side they are dying let's go and give them a good news and i've come to tell you this morning for you to be able to overcome this spirit of jealousy you begin to let other people understand what god is doing in your life what god is doing there in their life you may you may you may be able you may not be able to go to where they are but god can use you as a stepping stone remember when 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 jonathan when, when king saul was a king na miaka mingi sana akawa mungu nani daudi amekuwa mfalme maandiko yanasema akakumbuka ni nani atakayesaidia katika nyumba ya ya Suleimani na kukaangaliwa mtu mwingine yote katika nyumba ya Suleimani kwa kosekana but there was one young man by the name Jonathan na maandiko yanasema he said go bring that man na alipoletwa he akapata kibari mbele ya mfalme na akabarikiwa because you may not be able to take that somebody to where he God want him to be or you may not be able to take him exactly to where you think you want but you can help him to go to the next level and when he go to where God want him to be atakukumbuka atakukumbuka there are people that help me so much in this life and every day when i woke up in the morning i remember them in prayers and even those that i can be able to reach them i always reach them because i know i was in a point some years back i was somewhere but somebody helped me to be who i am this morning and I have come to tell you this morning we can be able to conquer with this enemy we can be able to conquer with this horn uh, the, the four horns we can be able to conquer with the spirit of devaluation we can move from that level and know that we've done something we we are valuable we are important in the eyes of god we can deal with the spirit of greed we we, we can't just take everything that is coming on our way and believe that we have we are so precious in the eyes of god there god has a good plan for us and we can also fight with the spirit of of, of defeat and the spirit of jealousy let's pray father we thank you this morning thank you for speaking to us in a very 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 powerful way if told us lord this morning that we need to deal with four horns that deals with our life devaluating ourselves the spirit of greedy the spirit of defeat and even the spirit of jealousy we know it is four major things that are hindering us and even stopping us to be who you are this morning but i know that god you've planned you have a very great plan of our lives i pray for every person that is listening to me this morning those who are in the service and those who are watching us on 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 facebook and in youtube lord i pray that you may stretch the hand over their life and every horn that has been dealing with their life that have been destroying them some of them they, their business have been destroyed some of them their marriage some of them their career some of them they have been messed up into a way they cannot go back to where they are lord i declare and i decree the horn that has been so severe over their life it is defeated right now in the mighty name of jesus i i break every spirit of devaluation my god every spirit of jealousy the spirit of defeat spirit of greed i break them over their life in the mighty name of jesus and i declare they will make it they will be successful because the greater success it is not in our achievement but it is in our mind i pray this morning that you may change the way they see things the way they understand the way they take things and even the way they reason in the mighty name of jesus lord even as you deliver their mind into their captivity i declare you will free them and flourish them in the life that they live this morning i bless you because of your word thank you for ministering to us in a very very powerful way lord i pray this word that has, that you've just spoken to us as fall in a good soil and it will bear fruit in jesus mighty name i thank you father even for those who are giving this morning on 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 on, on um, uh, those who are watching us on live stream and they are giving they are giving their offering and their tithe lord i bless their tithe and i release the blessings upon their life in the mighty name of Jesus i bless their offering and lord their their seed i i bless even uh, the, the 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 offering of connecting themselves with this word i pray that you bless them you will increase them and you will do great upon their life i declare their barn will never go dry but you continue supplying to them all the days of their life and therefore i rebuke the devourer in jesus mighty name i give you praise and i honor you that is in jesus powerful mighty name i pray and i believe Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord do you good. Once again, you can share the video. You can do the host party. For those who have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, you can go to Sozo Ministries 
Juja, Soso Ministries Juja, and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can see and enjoy all other teachings that we have prodded in our YouTube channel. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord increase you, until we meet some other time, Shalom, Shalom.